most uh, infectious diseases, they tend to travel the roots of inequality in any society. If we already look at what we know about just some of the risk factors in terms of senior citizens and people who have um, some underlying kind of health issues there, we know that there are racial disparities in, you know, in diabetes, for instance, in uh, hypertension impacts African Americans and Latinos in this country and um, and, and heart disease. So we may potentially over time see some real racial stratification in terms of um, who is impacted. And also just given that so many workers who are unable, say, to, you know, take off because they're in service industry jobs um, tend to be more black and brown folks. One of the things that came out of the, the uh, AIDS epidemic is that it did bring people together uh, in a moment where things were really unsure um, to really uh, take care of one another, but, but also fight like hell to live. And, and if that meant, you know, fighting the government, the hospitals, public health, researchers, pharma companies, people fought. And so I think we need to kind of carry that same spirit uh, in thinking about what it is we need to do to take care of our personal selves and also our loved ones and our just larger community. But also, what does this expose about the kinds of things that we don't have in place as a society that will prevent this from happening in the first place? So we should be fighting like hell for paid sick leave. We should be fighting like hell for Medicare for all. We should be fighting like hell for lower drug costs. We should be fighting like hell for people to have, uh, you know, access to these things. So I think like we have to think about all of this kinds of um, infrastructure that we, you know, don't have in place um, that this virus exposes that we take care of one another and continue to fight uh, for our lives.